morning and welcome as we gather on this first Sunday of Advent. As we gather together and prepare our hearts and minds, let us go to God in prayer. Dear God, we confess that our sense of expectation has been dulled. We have become reluctant to anticipate any wonders from your hand. We have become so content with the past that we make it the master of our lives. Dear Lord God, give us eyes to see and ears to hear you as we rise from our naps and stretch our souls that we may worship you in spirit and in truth. We lift up all of these things as we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in an Advent affirmation of faith. We believe that God has come to us, that God brought us into being, that this God gave us breath and purpose, that we have been blessed to be a blessing to others, that we have fallen short of this commandment, but that God has nevertheless loved us despite our brokenness. We believe that God is coming to us, that God is not happy to leave us alone, that this God will come to us as a particular human being, that God will be made known to us in flesh and bone like ours, that Mary will soon give birth and Joseph will soon clap his hands in joy, that Jesus Christ will be born and our salvation made complete. We believe that God will come to us, that God will have the final word and that word will be good, that this God will give us the presence of the Spirit to continue our work, that we are called to be disciples to all the corners of the earth, that the day is coming when tears and pain will be no more, and all will gather at the table to sing an endless and perfect Alleluia. Amen. Star child, earth child, go between of God. Love child, Christ child, heaven's lightning rod. This year, this year, let the day arrive when Christmas comes for everyone, everyone. to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to him on the ten-string lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, their starry host by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into jars. He puts the deep into storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him. 
For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. The Lord foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of the peoples. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever. The purposes of his heart through all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. From heaven the Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place he watches all who live on earth. He who forms the hearts of all, who considers everything they do. No king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Despite all its great strength, it cannot save. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love, to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love rest upon us, O Lord, even as we put our hope in you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Every year we light candles as we prepare for the coming of Christ. More and more candles, more and more light, as we watch and wait for Jesus, the light of the world. God of promise, come into our darkness, renew your hope in us, for you alone bring life out of death. Receive God's promise of hope from Psalm 33. The eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him on those whose hope is in his unfailing love, to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love rest upon us, O Lord, even as we put our hope in you. At this time, as we gather together, let us take a few moments and to remember names and situations that we lift up with our joys and concerns. And we will have a brief moment of silent prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Today's scripture comes from the Old Testament in Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. This is what Isaiah, son of Amoz, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. It will be raised above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Come, O house of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. During this time of year, a variety of emotions are felt. Advent and Christmas can be very hard for some people. Depression and suicide increase more than any other time of the year. Loneliness and isolation stop some people from enjoying the holiday. Hymns and Christmas carols can bring out feelings of sadness and make some people withdraw from everything that the Christmas season brings with it. High blood pressure goes up because people are in a race trying to find the perfect gifts and getting to that next social get-together. We go and go and go until we reach our breaking point. Churches are no different. From studies and carols to Advent lessons to Christmas programs and choir cantatas, along with the demanding rehearsal schedules, churchgoers can hardly find the time to fit all the festivities in a schedule. Things like silent time and moments of reflection on Advent readings from Scripture are at a high priority. A lot of times the priority is too high. And the only moment we have may be at worship, if we are able to fit that in. It is also a time when frustration can lead to anger. Conflict over priorities comes to the surface as expectations run all over. Worship is the place we may run for help, for confession, for forgiveness, for being redeemed in the middle of the Christmas season. It is a place where we can go to look at our priorities. It is the time of year, maybe, when we need God's help more than any other time. For me, I remember seeing a Peanuts cartoon where Charlie Brown is sitting under a tree and thinking about a reading from the Bible. It is about Moses hearing a word from above. And Charlie thinks for a moment of what it must be like to be able to hear God's voice. He looks at his sidekick, Snoopy, and asks him if he's ever heard a word from above. And in a little bubble over Snoopy's head are the words, Attention, Kmart shoppers. This time of year, we find ourselves trying to keep as much of the noise out as possible. But too often, we find ourselves in Snoopy's situation and tired by all the Christmas things going on. However, the reading from Isaiah calls out to us and asks us to deal with the purpose and meaning for being in worship on Advent's first Sunday. It is not, is it not, the place to which we go each week to hear a word from above, a place to quiet the noise inside us, to hear that 
still, small voice. Maybe so, but maybe it is more than that. Worship can also be an important Advent location for us to think about and believe. He'll show us the way he works so we can live the way we're made. As it says in Isaiah chapter 2, verse 3, in the translation from the message. How can we worship and live in ways this Advent that show less time spent on Wall Street and more on Church Street? First of all, in our places of worship, let us hear God saying how we are to act and behave out in the world. An example may help us understand this, so for a moment, picture yourself in a local town meeting sponsored by the mayor to address the issue of teen violence and destruction of property. Many from the church attend this meeting, and among the big turnout, there are citizens and representatives from different denominations giving insights and reports on how they are dealing with the issue. And at some point, the feeling of God being at that meeting may fall upon you. You feel that God is working through the people who are there sharing. It is clear to you that the people from the different churches in that room were really interested in the issue and want to do something to help. Said another way, they are acting out their worship in a very real and significant way. As you listen, you are told that the police department have identified a number of people of different ages and backgrounds, but much of what you are hearing is about efforts being looked at youth in the area. It starts be to become clear that the meeting is basically about preventive measures to keep young people out of trouble. But what about the ones that were identified as the troublemakers? Is God interested in these people? Or are we to write them off as unreachable, lost causes? A few people do voice this concern during the break time and even speak to the mayor and the police chief about what is happening and what is being planned to reach those who had already been in trouble and were running with the wrong crowd. What you find out later is that there is a plan to develop a hotline of professionals who are trained in the area of counseling who would take calls from callers and direct them to those who could help find, find a way of leaving that bad crowd. It is clear that the preventive measures alone will take a huge amount of community effort in such dangerous and complex work. Rescuing the victimized young people will be hard and risky and even harder work. This is where Isaiah gets under our skin. Some of us in that meeting room might sense we are being called to join the cooperative effort to let youth know that they were on our radar screens, not as targets but as victims and worth every one of our efforts. We felt they were our children and our neighbors and we were being moved to reach them and begin the process of learning and educating and helping them be restored to their community. They didn't have to be alone, fearful, hateful, angry toward our town. We wanted them back with us. We left the meeting that night feeling moved to support the efforts addressing the issue in our town and reaching out to them. Is this not the way God wants us to respond in what really matters in this life? After all, is this not the way God behaves toward us when we go off the path? Isaiah's call for advocacy, those who can meditate, mediate and help bring change to life's most challenging and demanding concerns, Make no mistake about it. Addressing such concerns as teen violence is a huge mountain to climb. It takes time, 
money, and sweat equity to be God's mediators. But with God's help, the church can help a community make the climb. So how do we begin such journeys of rescue? Isaiah says in verse 5 of our reading, Come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. How will knives and guns ever be turned into tools of learning if we are not first enlightened by God? Advent is a wonderful time for enlightenment from above. Having said all this, I still believe this time of year is a real mixed bag of things. Some of the things are of little or no value. Some are invaluable, even eternally valuable. A view from above every now and then helps sort them out for us, especially during Advent. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning, and as we get ready to begin a new week in our journey to Bethlehem, let us go to God in prayer. Today, brothers and sisters, let us put on the armor of Christ's light, shine for all the world to see, and let us go forth in the love of God. Amen.